Hey guys, welcome in bright and early Tuesday morning, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo for you margarita heads out there. I'm a Dos Equis Amber kind of guy myself, but we're going to talk baseball today and we're going to dive in and show you an easy research process from front to back that's going to identify not only the better pitchers on the slate, but some of the better stacks on the slate, and then we're going to end up with the hottest hitters on the slate. One, two, three. Let's go. First thing we're going to do is we're going to dive into the pitchers tab, and I like using the FanDuel pitchers tab over here at DFSArmy.com where I'm a coaching contributor because it's a little bit simpler than dealing with the two pitchers and whatever else. But in these statistics that we're looking at, the only thing we're going to change from FanDuel to DraftKings is these projections and value and whatnot. The pitcher stats and stuff obviously don't change. So it's just easier for me and faster for me to stick to the FanDuel side, so that's what I do. I kick down the time tab, I open up a filter, and I knock off all the games that don't start on the main slate. 7.05 and before, or you know, anything before 7.05 is gone, 7.05 and after generally gets included in the main slate, which is what we're generally talking about. But this works for any slate. You just select those times and pick the teams that you have on your slate, and you're off and running because this is going to work no matter what you do. You slide over here to the K score, sort by descending. Bring those top strikeout pitchers to the top. I'll throw a link in the description for uh, K score and W score so you can learn what those are, why they're proprietary, and why they're very, very good metrics in, term in determining matchups on paper today. And we bring Bieber, Peralta, maybe a little Robbie Ray, uh, Alzale, Bueller, Darvish, boom, right up to the top. These are the guys we're going to be focused on mostly today for our pitcher selection, I guess I should say. When you're looking at the pitcher, you know, strikeouts are king. That's what we're trying to find here in baseball. I don't need to look at anything else. K-score is an all-encompassing metric. It's going to land me on good pitchers. When I build multiple lineups, MME style, I need a portfolio of pitchers anyway. These are the guys I'm generally going to be using. Unless I find somebody else is going to be rather chalky, I might throw them in too because generally speaking, Higher-owned pitchers do perform fairly well, and they buoy your lineups a little bit. So I'm going to have somewhere between five and seven or eight pitchers on any given slate. And that's just when anyone else gets unchecked, they're gone. I don't even want to see them in my lineups. Again, DraftKings is a little bit different with the second pitcher option. I'm going to include more pitchers, but you know what? Sometimes I really don't. If I get some lower-priced guys in here, like an Alzale, I'm just going to leave it as is. I want the strikeout upside, and this metric shows me who has the strikeout upside on the slate. Another thing that I can do is I can take a K score, the lower numbers are bad for pitchers, which means it's good for bats. I can take the W score and I can do the same thing, sort it by descending order and bring the bad pitchers to the top. W score shows who gets hit rather hard, and then I can find in walk per nine, home run per nine, whip, Sierra, stuff like that, the red, and that's going to land on the guys that are, should get thumped, Thorpe, Mize. That's wrong Will Smith, but Robbie Ray, Eric Fett. So Fett, Robbie Ray's on the strikeout side as having upside. He's also on the Woba side as having downside. That means he's a boomer bust GPP type of pick. He could have a good day. He might have a bad day. I don't follow the box scores day to day. You may be yelling at the computer right now. Oh, my God, he sucks this year. Maybe you're right. I'm still going to have a 3 to 5% share of the guy because I know what he can do. And when he pops off, I want to be there. Maybe that's... Not your way of playing, but that's my way of playing, and you're watching my video and you're following my way. So let's get back into the program here, but I've found who I can stack against generally are the cheaper pitchers as well. So if I can find, you know, the pricing algorithms are pretty good. And they, there's a reason Jacob deGrom's $12,000, right? That also means there's a reason some of these other guys are $5,500 and $6,000. They suck. So I'm going to stack against those guys. Thorpe, you're getting stacked against. This is, again, the wrong Will Smith, but I come down here to higher W scores, and I start finding cheaper pitchers. Casey Mize, Chase Anderson, you might get stacked against. Yarborough, you might get stacked against, right? You're going to – Kittredge, for sure, you're going to get stacked against because you're cheap, 5,500, and probably an opener and not a starter anyway. So these are things that I'm going to then slide over here and start looking at the opponents. Washington, Texas, for sure. Boston, Washington, maybe Oakland, maybe Atlanta, Milwaukee. Man, that's a, I, Milwaukee has not been doing that well. I understand that. So, again, I'm going to have to look at the offense and say, well, maybe they're not a very good offense anyway, but they're in a good spot, so I may have a small percentage of them, but I'm not going to go overboard and go crazy. These are generally the teams that I'm looking at stacking. I then come over to the draft, the, to the hitters portion, and that's all I do for pitchers. 
under five minutes, I've found you five to seven pitchers, and I've found you three to five stacks already that you should be paying attention to. Write these down as you go so that you can look back at a piece of paper, and then when you get to your optimizer phase and such, you've already got stuff written down. You don't have to go back and forth and back and forth. Be efficient with your time. That's the name of the game. I'm going to start with the exact same thing on the hitters tab. I'm coming down here to the filter. I'm kicking off all you donkeys that aren't on the main slate. That's pretty simple, right? Whatever's left is what we're dealing with. And I'm going to slide over here now, and I'm going to use the W score because that's good for bats. Sort by descending order. Hopefully I don't get too many blanks at to the top, but I probably will. Woo, that's a lot. Scroll down here to the base of what you're looking at anyway. Let's see, who'd we knock out? We've got Cardinals missing. We've got Minnesota missing. So maybe we find those are good guys, good teams to stack as well. But for now, I'm looking at the high W score guys, the guys I've got some information on, the guys I've got some proof on. And I slide back over this way and start looking for that front page. And who lands on there a lot? Tampa, Washington, Texas, Atlanta, Washington, 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 Washington. We said we were going to stack Washington. They were about second on the list when we were looking at the pitchers. So that's already making sense. So the first thing I do is I kick Washington off by holding the control key down, tapping that little team over there, turning them white. Washington is now gone. Right? I wrote them down as a potential stack. Who else repeats on here? Atlanta, Atlanta, Texas, Texas, Texas some Milwaukee. So the same basic teams that we already identified. I can knock out Texas. Who else? Atlanta. Eh, not so much Atlanta. Milwaukee shows up four times. So Texas and Milwaukee. Is anybody else going to come to the forefront? See, I'm knocking these teams out, and now I'm dealing with what's left. Boston, Oakland, Atlanta, Atlanta, Oakland, Boston, Boston. Boston. There's a lot of Boston there, so maybe Boston... So now I've got three or four stacks that are in paper matchups. They've got hitters that hit the ball well this year going up against pitchers that are struggling a little bit. That's a green light matchup. I'm going to write them down. I'm going to pay attention to those particular teams as potential stacking candidates for the day's slate, right? Now that I've done that, I'm going to come over here to the WOBA trends in the trends tab, and I'm going to sort this one by a number filter. Greater than, I start with 400, so since it's not greater than or equal to, I drop it to 399. This is just where I start. This is just my baseline. I may adjust this, you know, tighter or looser, and 199 for a 200 on the ISO. 14-day trends, bada-bing, bada-boom. How many people? See how we've got a lot of people on this list right here? That's a lot of names. I might want to cut that down a little bit more. Do I want more power or more WOBA? I usually opt for a little bit more WOBA when I'm cutting it down. So let's go to 409. Let's cut off 10 more points of WOBA and see how much it shortens the list. That's not too bad right there. For a bigger slate, we're looking for, I don't know, 20 to 40 names, roughly. And that's going to get us in the ballpark. So now what I have is guys that over the last 14 days are hitting over a 400 WOBA, over a 410 actually, and over a 200 ISO. They're hitting for power. Now, all I need to do is go back over here and sort my teams by ascending order alphabetically. Here's who's going to land on my list. I'm going to go into the optimizers and boost these projections. I want these players in more of my lineups. And I'm going to see David Peralta, Carson Kelly, Josh Rojas for Arizona. For Atlanta, Albies, Riley. For Boston, Bogarts, Devers, Martinez. Chicago's Chris Bryant and Jake Marisnik. Then I'm going to look down Chicago White Sox and grab some Moncada and Cincinnati, Winker, and Castellanos. Now, if I'm stacking these teams, these are going to be the major components of my stacks. They're the hotter hitters in the offense. And then I'm going to let the optimizer pull in the other little bitty pieces to it, the value pieces or the top of the order punts or whatever and round out my stacks. But most of my stacks are going to have these guys in there. And for my VIPs, I go through my Domination Station Optimizer setup process for MME. It's really, really simple. You guys, baseball's volatile enough and random enough that really and truly you don't need to look at a lot of stats. You can put a few in your favor, and you can say, hey, I like guys that are swinging hot bats, or I like guys with high implied run totals, or I like teams that are a little bit lower owned, in which case you would come down here to the MLB leverage stacks to, uh, page, tool, whatever you want to call it, and when our ownership projections pop up, you can take those first two or three guys and uh, teams that are highly owned, that are chalky, and knock them out. Get rid of them. 
or cut your exposure. You may want 20% of them, cut it in half to 10. Take less of those high-owned teams. The chalk fails in MLB often enough that you can fly just under the radar. Have very similar chances to breaking the slate with your offense at much lower ownership. When that happens, that generates leverage for you. That means that as fewer people are on your team because they're all concentrated on Dodgers or they're all concentrated on Padres, when those guys come off flat, which they do all the time, your team, the Minnesota Twins or whatever, blows up for eight runs and you're sitting in that stack with half the ownership. Those are the teams you go overweight on. And you sit back. This is like fishing in a river, man. You cast a big wide net out there and you sit back and wait for the salmon to swim into your net. Over the course of time, it happens. You are going to use our leverage tools, our research station, our cheat sheets, and all of those different tools to maybe put you on a pool of players that makes a lot of sense for the night. You're going to intentionally try to fly just under the radar. You don't need to eat all that chalk. Fly just under the radar. Generate some leverage for yourself and win more money. And if you need finer tuned points or more detailed explanations, you know where to find me, inside DFSArmy.com, coaching our VIPs off and on all day long, showing them how to use these tools, showing them how to create their own systems, showing them how to create their own contest selection. You want to play cash games? Fine, I can show you how. You want to play MME? Fine, I can show you how. You want to play a blend of both? Fine, I can show you how. But you got to come inside, you got to ask for the coaching. Get yourself put on the right track, start winning more money playing baseball, and have a great summer. It's just that simple. Come inside, use the coupon code CHOP, C-H-O-P, while you're at it. And if you've listened to this all the way through, number one, thank you. Number two, drop a like, drop a, drop a subscribe on the video, and keep me pushing more of this content out to you. I do the same process pretty much day in and day out. And it wins the nickels, it wins the dime times, it wins... Money in the 100-man leagues, in the 10-man leagues, in the 50-50s and cash games. It just wins over time. Yes, we have our ups and downs. We have long stretches of variance, but over time, it wins. I can prove it to you. Come inside and ask me. Take care, homies. Tuesday, Cinco de Mayo. Go grab yourself a beer or a margarita. Come back and let's talk some baseball inside the DFS Army VIP chat rooms. I'm Chopadong. Peace out.